all of you, from your introduction, it sounds as though you know, you're all witnessing um, a number of areas of changing customer behavior. So um, how are you adapting your own sales and service operations to respond to this, given your own internal organizational challenges? Um, James, would you like to come in on this one first, please? Yeah, sure. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, so, I mean, from our perspective, I alluded to it earlier, the largest part of our organization is our physical auction business. Um, and uh, I suppose hints in the title, physical auction, lots of people in an auction hall, two, three hundred people, um, cars moving through the auction hall. So, so that was a, a major part of our business that was affected. And actually, we were already on a strategy of how we digitalize that part of our business. Um, very old in its approach about how physical auctions operate. So, as I say, we had a strategy. We were on a journey anyway. What this did and what COVID forced us to do was just speed that process up. Now, what it also meant from our perspective is that from a customer's change in behaviours is that, I mean, we were traditionally selling somewhere around about 15 to 20% of vehicles online anyway, out of those half a million cars we'd sell. Now, with customers now having to adapt and only buy cars online, that was the only way they could do it. We had to really support those customers that weren't used to using digital channels and perhaps in some instances didn't even want to use digital channels. They're used to turning up at an auction site, having their bacon sandwich, and, and buying cars. So we really had to make sure that we were really building the support framework for those customers uh, beyond what we've done already. So a bit like um, Tiffany was talking about, actually making sure we, we over-indexed on providing those customers with that proactive support. So we had a lot of customers that just didn't want to buy physically at all, um, had never used that type of technology. So really making sure that we proactively supported them. So we had probably three or four of our teams dedicated to going out and working with those customers, making sure they were comfortable to buy vehicles online. Um, and then making sure that we had a, re a reactive team as well, based at home again, because traditionally these guys were based in call centers in our head office in Leeds. So they're all operating remotely to support those customers so that when they did have issues and needed some help, actually we were there to resolve those pretty quickly. So it was all about building trust and confidence because um, we, you know, we, we could have taken a very arrogant approach. Every other one of our competitors was shut down. Customers had no choice but to buy vehicles online if that's how they wanted to buy them. And, but that again goes against our, our foundations as an organization. So we absolutely over index in providing them those services to support them in the, um, in the support that they needed to buy online. Now that fell into two key areas. So we have two customers, we have the people that are obviously looking to dispose of the vehicles and then the customers that are then come in and buy those cars. So for the people buying, as I alluded to, and that was just giving them that dedicated support and making sure that the system was easy for them to use. We have also behind the scenes then um, pulled out a dedicated team to develop the technology required. So based upon feedback from customers, things we never even thought about at the time, suddenly they raised and said, actually, if you could do this, it would make our life so much easier. So I'm pleased to say, again, we implemented a team that have delivered some of those changes rapidly, where things would normally take several months to change in our technology. Actually, we've managed to move those through in a matter of weeks to support those to, to, to be able to buy more vehicles. And then from a seller's perspective, um, they've been used to standing on rostrums, seeing the whites of the eyes of those buyers on the, um, at, in front of them and being able to build up a relationship to, to sell those vehicles and knowing on what price to put the hammer down and sell them. So, I mean, really interesting, again, from Tiffany's point is that data and insights become critical for us to support those customers. So when they're sat at home, those auctions are taking place. Being able to provide them the insight that shows them what's happening in the auction, any given point, what's been going on with previous sales, previous product to help them make those right decisions. So a lot of the things we've been working on, Alan, actually, they were already there. There were things we wanted to work on, but this has really focused our mind to move those much quicker than we had done planned to do previously. Okay, Tiffany. Um, so, and sorry, right. I was, sorry, I was just going to say then, actually, from, from that perspective as well, with the data and insight as well, is, is that, that that's been a critical point of what we've been trying to do and provide. And I suppose from, from Tiffany's perspective, specifically with the world she works in turning, I think world of data and insight, I think was the line. I suppose that's one area you're hugely focused on as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, in a very similar vein, SAS has had to really rally very, very quickly to support all sorts of different um, urgent requirements from our customers. 
Um, so there's two areas I think that um, where internally at SAS um, we've seen significant change um, in our organization, lots of change, but I think two really powerful ones. Um, one is we've had to very rapidly rip down old barriers, um, rip down the red tape and just we've been forced to become agile in a, in a very similar way. Um, and I'll give you an example. So um, as we were, just as we were going into lockdown um, towards the end of March, the government announced the furlough scheme and that was incumbent on HMRC to actually deliver that. So they had to basically take the tax system, which is used to taking money off people and reverse it and use that same system to give money back. <laughs> so a really, really big challenge that they had on their hands. So we got the call um, from the HMRC urgently requesting support and analytics to support that whole that whole um, system because the money went out and uh, no questions asked and they, they had 72 hours from a claim to actually pay that money so huge potential for fraud basically so um, we had three weeks uh, to get that system up and running and you know typically a system like that would have taken the HMRC multiple years because of all the governance and compliance and testing that you would normally have to go through. But um, you know, we had to work very closely, not just with HMRC, but with other vendors and partners. So there was a fantastic collaboration on that. Um, and you know, just it, uh, one of the guys that was working on it from SAS basically described this as agile on speed. <laughs> Um, and I think the night before this was all supposed to go live, there was a lot of prayers said, people suddenly found religion <laughs> and um, you know, a lot of fingers crossed because it just hadn't gone through the normal testing. But, you know, luckily it worked. Um, and I think it's just not, not that I would advocate that you put systems like this in without that sort of rigorous testing, but it just goes to show what you can do when there's a will and a desire and people come together and collaborate to make things happen. And then just the second point I wanted to just raise was in a very similar way to, uh, uh, to Cox Automotive and Vupa. We've also shifted our focus from product and sales to much more of a service and support environment. And a lot of our customers have really relied on analytics and machine learning through this, through this period. But a lot of them either don't have the resources or the data science scientists or even the analytic capabilities, or they do have them, but those people are focused on other initiatives. And here at SAS, we've got a wealth of data scientists and we've got access to all sorts of and ranges of different analytical techniques and machine learning and AI. So we've been able to kind of deliver that as a service so people bring their challenge to us. Um, and we can deploy our data scientists deploy our technology, basically use of all our technology and capabilities and deliver those uh, results back. So really focusing on helping and servicing, delivering services and support uh, and shifting away from that kind of sales um, environment that we're, that we're used to. That's great. Thank you, Tiffany. Um, so Kirk, Tiffany has just mentioned a, a shift in sales focus from product to service and, and the implications for the sales teams for, for them at SAS. So as you've guided Boopa's operational response, have you, have you seen any changes or support that you've needed to put in place for your sales and account management and customer service teams to enable them to continue to support their changing client needs? It's been interesting um, listening to James and Tiffany at the pace at which uh, people have had to set up alternative ways of working. and. In a number of ways, we've had to be very quick off the mark as well. You know, we stood up several thousand people working from home with all the challenges that, that home working come with. And we were able to continue to help our customers. But at the same time, we've moved demand much more to um, digital. So we, we stood up web chat in a matter of weeks. We stood up um, chatbots in a matter of weeks, e-forms, online forms. And we've seen customer behavior change much more towards that. So customers are becoming savvy at using digital. I think as time goes on, uh, we need to think about how we take the best of this new way of working. Um, and we're only slowly starting to get back into the office, but I don't imagine we'll be visiting customers, seeing customers anytime soon. And home working has opened up a whole new uh, recruitment market for us and a whole new flexible, more engaging way of working for our people. 
We've also had to really adapt our leadership style. So whilst I don't think we'll be seeing clients um, every so often, um, internally, we've also been a bit like James, uh, meeting daily and our exec team is meeting directly with leaders across the whole business every week. We have almost daily stand-ups and we're trying to keep that momentum going as we drive ourselves back into this, this, this new normal, but also keeping our people informed. It's much more challenging to keep people informed remotely than in the office, but we really do encourage people to remain co uh, connected. We have lots of information and guidance to others to do the same, you know, from tips like how do you cope with dogs at home to homeschooling you know, and, and to managing your mental health. And we've made best use of technology in that space as well. So we hold regular market calls with our brokers to keep them informed of, of things like our hospital capacity, what services are available from home and so on and so forth. And, and in general, they've been really appreciative of, of how we've adapted. And in a very short space of time, we've developed a whole suite of uh, Bupa at Home initiatives. So different ways of connecting with Bupa that I will imagine will continue way beyond uh, any return to normal. So things like being able to see your GP, talk to a nurse, have a phone or video consultation with a consultant or a therapist are actually going to sit alongside our normal treatments as, as we uh, as we go back into the new normal. And, and even more complicated um, situations, uh, let's say for example where somebody has cancer, we can provide specialist patient support and we can even start um, chemotherapy treatments at home. So we've seen more of a switch to helping our clients with their own teams or staff on the wellbeing front, mental health front, and I expect that to continue as well. Um, clients aren't expecting visits in the main, but we're, we're, they're definitely receptive to making much more use of available technology like Zoom to catch up remotely. That's great. Thank you, all of you. Some really great examples of adaptability there. So 